Today I'm going to talk about something called a stream function. Okay, and the symbol for it is psi, the group letter psi. Now, why do I do it? That's the main question I want to answer before I discuss this particular function. The, the reason is that actually introducing of this function is going to make my life easier. Okay, and I will demonstrate to you in this particular module as well. Okay, so what I want to do is first I want to consider a 2D incompressible flow in Cartesian coordinates. So by convenience I pick the Cartesian coordinates and I take my, myself a 2D flow and I'm taking an incompressible flow in this particular case. Okay. What I mean by 2D is I have option over here and specifically what I want to mean is UV present so these U and V terms are present but W is 0. You don't have to do that. You can get yourself U is equal to 0, establish a relationship. You can get V is equal to 0, establish a relationship as well. So in this 2D case Let's look at what happens to my conservation of mass or continuity equation. So what happens is del u del x plus del v del y plus del w del z is equal to zero because it's incompressible, right? Now, as I identify w to be the zero, this last term vanishes. So I got myself basically del u del x plus del v del y is equal to zero. So this is as far as I can proceed. Now, at this point, what I want to do is I want to go back to the title of this module and I want to focus on introducing a stream function. Okay, so now I'm introduce a stream function. Okay, so this is a particular function, and what I want to say is this is the psi symbol, and it can be a function of the way that I picked, it can be a function of xy, it's not a function of z because that's what I picked, it's a 2D flow, and it in general terms can be unsteady as well okay and the way I relate now the question is how am I going to relate this function to the velocities okay and the relationship is actually established this way u is equal to del psi del y and v is equal to negative of del psi del x now I want to take a retention to two points this is the velocity in the x direction u is the velocity in the x However, it's obtained by taking the partial of the stream function with respect to the y direction. Okay? On the other hand, if you look at the other formulation, the v, which is the velocity in the y direction, is a function of how the stream function changes in the x direction. Okay? And actually, in fact, in addition to that, I have myself a negative sign in front of this formulation as well. Okay? So this is worth noting. Now, I mentioned when we started this module that this is going to make my life easier. So I want to do it this way. Okay, I will demonstrate to you why this makes my life easier. So I'm going to pick up u over here and I'm going to insert it there. I'm going to pick up the v and I'm going to insert it to here. And the summation of these two terms basically must be equal to zero from the conservation of mass. Okay, so let's just go ahead and do it. Uh, Basically, if I have del u, del x, what it means is basically it is the, the rate of change of u and the u is defined right up here at is the del psi, del y. Okay? And if I can just rewrite this, that is convenient to me, I'm going to get myself del square psi, del x, del y. Okay? So basically what it means is I'm taking the second partial First with respect to y, then with respect to x. Let's do the same for del v, del y. And what we'll obtain is del del y of, basically from up here you can see that it's going to be minus del psi del x, right? So if I write the way that I write the above, del u del x equation as well, I will get this time around the differentiation will change, okay? And as the equation here indicates, I need to sum up these two and I need to obtain zero for my conservation of mass. So basically let's sum them up, okay? So del u del x, del v del y, 
is equal to 0. So then, u, del u del x is something I obtained, so I'm going to write myself del square psi del x del y plus a minus in front of it del square psi del y del x. So the question is, is this really equal to 0? Okay. So one thing that you may see that as we discussed before, this the first term is first take the partial with respect to y, then x. And in the other one, I first take the partial with respect to x, then y. Okay, so the question really asks me this. In a partial differential differentiation, does the order matter? Okay, whether I take the partial with respect to x first, then y versus y first, then x. Actually, the answer is no, it doesn't. Okay, the order of differentiation doesn't matter. The final answer is the same. And basically, mathematics comes to my help. This equation is always satisfied whatever the function psi is. The psi itself can be a fairly fun complicated function. It can be in a e, e to the power of x plus a ln of y, as an example. Okay, natural logarithm of y can be, right? So then if in an exam setting or in a homework setting or if I'm interested in finding whether the conservation of mass is satisfied then hey this is automatically satisfied we don't have to do any mathematics so let's just note that down okay this is a very important point I want you to understand stream function automatically satisfies the conservation of mass or also this equation also known as continuity right so stream function automatically satisfies the conservation of mass or continuity so very important okay so now in the previous modules we have covered something called the streamline and if you think about it, the name stream function and streamline, there is this common word stream in between both of them, right? So at this point in time, what I want to do is I want to go ahead and relate those two concepts, okay? So and the, the, the basic uh, relationship is this. By definition, okay, lines along which this psi is constant are called streamlines okay so by definition lines along which this psi is constant are called streamlines remember that when I first started this topic if we go up here so scroll up here you notice that I I said that the stream function are functions of x y and t okay what I'm saying here is that, hey, now it's going to be a constant value, such as 1, 2, 3, 5. Instead of a function, if it's a constant value, such as 1, 2, 5, 10, then my stream function becomes a streamline. I will illustrate how this is approached by solving an example for you. Okay? All right. One important topic before I want to finish this particular module is I want to look at something that is actually fairly commonly used in fluid mechanics. That is the volumetric flow rate volumetric flow rate and if you remember from our earlier conversations we talked about this the symbol being q and the volumetric flow rate is obtained by velocity times area right and the question is what is the volumetric flow rate between two streamlines such as psi 1 and psi 2 so what I mean by Psi 1 and Psi 2 is that in one stream function, this constant is equal to, let's say, 5 Psi 1. And in the second one, Psi 2, I'm saying that, hey, the, the number for that is 10, okay? So if I look at the Q, then what it becomes is it's going to be Psi 2 minus Psi 1. If I want to illustrate this to you, okay, in terms of a coordinate axis, I pick the top stream function is psi 1 and at the bottom I get myself a psi 1 okay the question is going to 
tell me this, okay? But one thing I'd like you to note that I picked this Psi2 as upper string line, okay? And if I look at the queue between these two string lines, I'm seeing that they are just simply the subsection of these two constants. So this is fairly advantageous, okay? And if I am interested in the direction, if the Psi1 is larger than Psi2, you can see from this equation, that Q equation, that I'm going to get myself a positive Q value. This indicates going to the right. And if I have my Psi1 is greater than Psi2, then I'm going to obtain a negative Q value. This simply indicates that the flow is going to the left.